YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to rotate an image in Photoshop. Like with most things in Photoshop, there's actually more than one way to do this and I will basically show you every way that I know of at least and hopefully that helps you find the best way for you. You'll find that you'll use different methods based on what you're trying to achieve at a particular time. So let's get straight into it. To demonstrate this I'm just going to duplicate this layer just so that we always have a base to go back to so Control shift alt n to create a new layer and Control shift alt e to basically stamp everything that is visible onto this new layer the first way to rotate an image it's a very basic way is you go to edit and down to transform and here you can see that you've actually got a bunch of options. So we can rotate it 180 degrees, which basically flips it around. So let's do that. We can rotate it 90 degrees, both clockwise and counterclockwise. Okay. All I'm doing is scrolling down and clicking it. Nothing, nothing else. Okay, so let's just get it back to where it was. Now, you can also see that I know this isn't quite rotating, but it is still relevant to shifting your image around. You can flip horizontal or flip vertical. An important thing to note though, is notice that this is only affecting the layer that is selected. So we've got this top layer selected. If I hide it, the other layer beneath it is not being affected by this technique. Okay, so let's just flip vertical to make it really obvious. Okay, so this is the one we're working on, layer one. Let me just get it back. The second way is to use the transform tool. So you can either press Control T on your T uh, on your T board. Yes, T board. Cool, why not? <laughs> you can either press Control T on your keyboard, let's just press Escape, or you can go to Edit and click on Free Transform, and you can see there the shortcut is actually shown, or you can just go up to the Move tool, okay? And if you select the Move tool, as you can see here, it gives you a little tooltip, which is kind of new, haven't seen that before, moves the selection or layer, and all you do is press V for that, okay? So now you can see that if I use the Move tool, I can rotate my image as I want, Right, if I hold on shift while I'm rotating, notice that it, it does it in 15 degree increments. Okay, so there's 45, there's 60, 75, and it actually shows you where my mouse pointer is. I'll indicate that shortly. Um, there's 90 degrees, 135, and so it goes. The move tool you can use to rotate images. I find sometimes I'll use that if it's quick. If I want something precise and I don't want to have to think or hold on extra keys, then I just edit and, you know, rotate clockwise. You can also flip an image vertically or horizontally using the move tool. A little bit of a trick to it. So if I hold down, okay, so I'm clicking here and I'm moving, okay, so I'm making it smaller or bigger. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to hold down alt. So it squashes the image and then turns it around. That's basically how that works. Super, super easy to do. The same works for vertical. I'm holding down shift. Look, if I hold down shift and I don't hold down alt, when I go all the way, oh, let me just zoom out. Okay, so let's do that again. So I'm not holding shift, I'm not holding alt. Look what happens to my image. It just completely disappears. If I hold down shift, in fact, let's just show you what I mean. Look, it gets all weird and funky, okay? So basically, so doing this, if you hold down Alt, that'll work too. I just hold down Shift because it helps it snap, which is kind of useful so that you don't distort it in any way. So those are the techniques. I'm just trying to think if I've forgotten. Ah, and if you're on another tool, if you're on the clone stamp tool, for example, and I press Control T, it automatically allows me to transform this as if I've got the move tool selected. But you can see I don't have the move tool selected right now. I'm purely in a transform tool scenario. All right, same things apply. You can hold down Alt and Shift or Option and Shift on a Mac. And there you go. I can move and control my layer. If I wanted to flip a, a bunch of layers, so let's for argument's sake, Control Shift Alt N and S for the clone stamp tool. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger and I'm just going to copy her face over here to kind of show you what happens. So we have 
two images here, um, one on top of the other. You can see this is just the cloned piece that we've cloned. If I want to flip or transform a bunch of layers and they're not merged, because maybe you're working on a whole group of things and you actually just want whatever effects to transform with your layer. Select that, hold down control and select all the layers that you want to be affected. Press control T. And now when I do anything to that image, it's doing it to all the images or all the layers that are selected. The same thing will apply for layer masks. So let's create a layer mask and just do something funky. Let me, I'm really, the, you know, the core is not to learn how to do this with layer masks. So I'm just going to make a bat and create some, some weird effect. Okay. So you can see we've got a layer mask on there. We've got, and it's clipped to my adjustment layer. We've got my layer that I've cloned on and we've got the original layer. So I'm just going to hold down shift, select all of those. Remember when you hold down shift, it selects everything in a straight line. If I hold down control, select this one, and now I can hold down control and select this top one, that middle one gets left out. It's a small thing, but it can help. Okay, so I'm selecting everything, control T to transform. And again, look, even my layer mask is moving with this image. To confirm this movement, simply press enter and done. And you can see it's so, so hectic, like even the layer mask has actually moved. So whatever we see behind it is being affected by the layer mask because that's showing white on the layer mask. So yeah, guys, I hope that helped you. Super quick and simple. Or well, at least I try to make it super quick and simple and helpful. And they, those are sort of the key ways to rotate an image in Photoshop. Use whatever works best for you. If you like the edit transform option, do that. And often I find it works really well. One important thing to note we just demonstrate it really quickly. So V for the move tool. Let's just move this over here briefly. If I go to edit, transform, flip horizontal, look what happens. It doesn't move it over here. It simply flips it within its own bounds. That can be useful. So counterclockwise, same thing. It doesn't like move it down. It keeps it in its same position. This little central point here, that's sort of the axis or where it's going to turn from. If I move that, go to edit, transform and rotate. Notice that it flips it, whereas before it didn't. This little point controls how it's going to flip. If it's in the middle of your image, it's not going to move. It's just going to flip within itself. almost completely forgot to explain to you guys how to rotate an image when what you're trying to do is change the orientation of your image from either landscape to portrait or vice versa. With your canvas, which is basically what this area is called, you can't rotate it at a funny angle. It has to be at a 90 degree angle. So it can either be this way or portrait. And I'll show you how to do that. There are a couple ways. So <laughs> Sorry, this video is ending up being a bit longer than I expected it to be, but let's get straight into it. The first way to do this is you use the crop tool. Now the crop tool is a funny little tool. It only works on your canvas. It doesn't do anything to your layers. If for example, you're trying to crop a layer, there are other ways to do that. You do not use the crop tool for cropping your layers. You use it for changing the dimensions of your canvas. Your layers sit on top of your canvas. The canvas dictates what part of your layer is visible as only the parts of the layer that are actually on the canvas will show up. Anything that falls outside this canvas bound doesn't show up. There is another added thing here, which I will get into in another video, which is about artboards and how artboards are slightly different, but we will deal with that in that video. Um, I don't want to confuse you. So let's just stick with this for now. So I've selected my crop tool. You'll see these little, they're not quite marching ants, but they are ants around the bounds of my canvas area. Now look what happens if I click aside. Suddenly I can see the bits that fall outside my canvas area. If I pulled it this way, you can see this area we couldn't see before because it was outside of the bounds of the canvas, but now we can see it. All right, so let's just escape, click here. Now here's the trick. You might need a pen and paper to do it this way, but this is how I do it. I know the dimensions of what my camera takes, the pixel dimensions, but if you don't know, first, before you go to the crop tool, go to image, canvas size and you want to see the pixel size. This is slightly different. Uh, it's a slightly different pixel size because I was using a different camera that I hardly ever use. Let's try to remember this. 3,888 pixels width by 2592 height. 
So what you're going to do, go to ratio, type those dimensions in 3888 by 2592. It's given us the exact dimensions that we're working on of this image. I want to take this and flip it, right? So all I'm going to do is press this little in between button and instantly it's now taken my canvas, given me the exact same dimensions as what I had before and changed the orientation. Like I said though, the canvas only sits vertically or horizontally. It will never sit diagonally. Your image can sit diagonally, your layer can, but not the canvas that it sits on. If I'm happy with that, I can press enter, but let's just move it around so I can show you. If I want to move what is shown, so you can see it grays out, all of the grayed out area will be hidden. The central area is what we're going to see on the canvas. And let's say I do that, but I don't quite like it. It's not a train smash. We can fix it after we've pressed enter. The important thing to note, do not click on delete cropped pixels, especially if you want to reposition layers after the fact. If you click on delete cropped pixels, all of the stuff that's sitting in the gray gets deleted, which is not what we want. Because if you want to rotate your image further or anything like that, you don't want to lose that information that's falling off the edge of the canvas. Content aware, really, I don't know what that's for. <laughs> not gonna lie to you, I never use it. So straight up, I'd have to figure it out and I'll let you guys know when I know because I don't right now. Straighten, same thing, I never use it. So straight up, I don't know what that's about. Again, I will do the research and the homework so that it's easy for you guys and I can tell you guys when I know. If I'm happy with this, I can press enter or I can click this little tick button that will accept the change that I've made. So let's press enter press enter again. There we go. And now you can see that all of these checkered areas are transparent. So if we exported this as a PNG, what you would get is this piece, this piece, everything that is not checkered. What you won't get is the background. But if you trans uh, transport, <laughs> If you export this as a JPEG, all these transparent areas end up being white. I don't know why it defaults to white, but when in the export dialog box, if the JPEG sees a blank pixel area, it just puts white in so that there's something there to export. That is the easiest way that I know how to do this. Now you can do it another way. So you can go to image, Go to canvas size and you can actually resize the canvas here on a pixel level. So let's just do that. Two, five, nine, two, three, triple eight. One thing that is important is the anchor. If you select nothing, remember what I said about anchor points earlier with regards to layers. It works a similar way when you use this technique with your canvas resizing or rotating in this case, because we're changing the you know, we're changing the orientation from portrait to landscape. The anchor point tells me where it's going to expand from. If I select this bottom section here, what it's going to do is it's going to pick up this corner and expand the change, if you will, using that corner as a central point. If I select the top corner, the same thing applies, that corner, same thing, the side, same thing. And it shows you, these little arrows show you exactly what's going to happen. So it's telling me that with my changes, it's going to lose height, it's going to increase width. That's what's going to happen. I want it to increase or, or change from the middle point. So that middle point is selected and I can press OK. The new canvas size is smaller than the current canvas size. Some clipping will occur. That's all that says. All that that means and all that clipping is, is what I was talking about before, where I say that some of the, that layer is there, but you we can't see it. It's clipped off the canvas. This is perfect press proceed and now we have our change. All it did was change the orientation. The catch with that technique is, in fact with both techniques, is that you do want to try to either remember or write down the exact dimensions unless you want the canvas to be another dimension entirely, which you can totally do at that step. Almost totally forgot but I've added this in and I think that is all there is to rotating or all the stuff that I could think of to cover about how to rotate in Photoshop. If you have any other things that I've missed out or any questions that haven't been covered for you, please do let me know in the comments down below. Um, when I create these videos, I do try to think of every possible scenario that you could be encountering and try to help with that. I'm only human though, and I could be missing something. So let me know guys. quick 
summary guys what i've covered in this video how to rotate individual and groups of layers how to flip a layer or group of layers horizontally or vertically how anchored layer masks are affected by rotating the layer it's attached to and last but definitely not least how the anchor point on the image works when rotating a layer all of these things are super cool when you start getting creative with it have fun with layers guys and don't be afraid to make mistakes sometimes the coolest effects are created by accident i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you liked it please do feel free to well like it um, if you like this channel you like what we're doing here feel free to subscribe don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when we post new videos i try to be disciplined and post every week to keep you guys in the photoshop and lightroom and premiere pro loop i absolutely love you guys i look forward to seeing you in the next one and i hope you have an amazing day weekend afternoon wherever you are in the world love you guys cheers bye, -bye.